Hello, Nicholas, and welcome to the Nordic Data Science and Machine Learning Summit. We are happy to have you with us today. So before we dive into further questions, can you please tell us more about your background and area of expertise? Okay, so uh, I'm currently the Chief Science Officer and Head of Research at the Uppsala Monitoring Centre. Mm -hmm. So we are a Swedish organisation, but working uh, on behalf of the World Health Organisation in the field of pharmacovigilance that is looking for uh, new adverse drug reactions, new side effects uh, from medicines that are on the market. Uh, my background is in, uh, in data-driven discovery, so I did my, my sort of basic degree in, in a Master's of Engineering Physics at Chalmers, and then I actually joined well, a small startup and then soon the Uppsala Monitoring Centre, soon after I did my uh, Master's thesis, and I've done my PhD in Mathematical Statistics as part of my work at the, at the Uppsala Monitoring Centre. So I've worked in different functions, focusing primarily on, on uh, data science in observational uh, health data. Well, quite impressive, Nicholas. You gave a presentation today, which was very nice, so congratulations on that, um, on uniting domain experts and data scientists for teams with greater impact. Can you please do a short recap of that for our viewers? Yes, so that has been a, a sort of a great uh, lessons learned from us mm -hmm. along the way, having worked in the field of data science, is to have real impact on what is actually used for uh, data analysis. It's been very successful if, when we have joined the two different functions together. So mm -hmm. both joining the people together, the people who were historically uh, responsible for just doing the routine data analysis, and they were domain experts, mm -hmm. together with the scientists who were both data scientists and domain experts, but coming together as one group, working together on both the, um, the methods development, the scientific work, but also doing some of the real data analysis mm -hmm. together. So that means getting data scientists out of their comfort zone, uh, working with real analysis to drive better impact. So to make sure we can actually get methods to, to use and get methods that actually solve the real problems. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So two of the hypes in this summit, in this conference, are data science um, in adding to that concept context machine learning as well. Mm. So can we, uh, can we differentiate between these? Well, I think they're like overlapping sort of ellipses mm. of, a, of a Venn diagram in a way. I think of machine learning as any, any method where you haven't sort of programmed the machine to do something according to a pre-specified notion, but you actually set the rules uh, or the framework for the machine and then you give it training data and then it learns from that training data what to do on its own. So those kinds of methods can obviously be used in, in data science uh, if, you're, uh, you know, if you're in predictive modeling or if you're in you know, inference space, for example, they can be used. Mm -hmm. Some other methods would not fall into that space, so they're different. I mean, you can have sort of pattern discovery methods which are not necessarily mm -hmm. based on uh, training data in that sense. So I think some methods we use in data science are machine learning methods, but not all of them. Um, so I think, I think there's, there's significant overlap, and I think that we've seen a shift recently towards more machine learning methods, especially now with the recent successes of some of the sort of the old technology of neural networks, which now with the improved theory and also the, the great computational uh, capacities is starting to pay off quite a bit in, in real practical domains. So I think they, they're of growing importance, the machine learning methods within the data sciences. Because data sciences could also be simple statistical analysis. I say simple, they but can one, be very one sophisticated ones. Impossible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, according to what you've said and according to your um, experience, well, what, what should we expect, let's say, in the nearest future? Well, I think. Regarding data science. So, from my vantage point, I think unstructured data, for us mm. in particular, free text, is becoming more and more important. So, we see that uh, we're moving from where we used to have data prepared for data analysis, more of now is not captured without that structuring. So we need to do some of that on the fly. Mm -hmm. So that poses new challenges like de-identification to preserve privacy of the, of the individual to contribute that data while still being able to, to do proper analysis, but also being able to, to sort of make inference and understand some of the content in that free text analysis. I think we will also see um, a bit of a backlash soon because we're on, uh, on, on an increased sort of uh, hype in terms of the use of data science and I think it's right this so I think it is really important but I think yeah. we are also perhaps moving too fast sometimes we're not ensuring always the scientific rigidity of what we do and I'm seeing a lot of optimism out there in terms of some of the results are being presented in terms of what we can do when you start to scratch the surface it turns out that the results are not actually so good because we haven't done the data science um, consistently and, and profoundly enough we haven't controlled for all the you know, possible confounders. We haven't looked at 
how will this generalize outside of the specific domain where I'm training. So I think we need to prepare for that, uh, for that backlash, which I think will come, uh, mm. and so that we, are, uh, we do as good as we can, uh, and then we are prepared to, to address that one. That. You're saying you, we should uh, get more from the science in it. Well, it's <laughs> called data science, and I think, yeah, it, it should really be a science. It needs to be a science. Well, Nikos, thank you. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank, thank you. you so much.